Well, for every species in Madagascar, the biggest threat is habitat destruction and habitat degradation because this is, is mainly a forested island and the species are adapted to forests. So number one threat clearly has to be seen as, as habitat loss or habitat degradation. But also in this region you have hunting pressure and the crown lemurs are one of the target species for hunters. So that combination of hunting and habitat, uh, habitat loss is very serious. So like every other species uh, in Madagascar, they're going, down, they're going downhill. Uh, they're a little bit better off than some of the other species, but so you have the luxury of still being able to remove some individuals from a population for purposes of translocation, but they're all in big trouble. And again, if we can do some experimentation and see how it works to put them on, a, on an island situation, which is easier to protect, then I think uh, that's very much worth doing. In June 2016, 62 crowned lemurs were poached in Nukimanamba protected area. And we started this project as our support and responsibility toward the country and to the region because lemurs are threatened, they're endemic to Madagascar. And in this way, we launched this project, Lemur Conservation, and together with Fanambi, the MBP, the Homa Zoo, and with the funding of Zoos Victoria, we first approached the community in January 2017. With a um, student from the university, we, we monitored these four lemurs that we have captured and radio cord for two months. We hired two rangers. We train them in monitoring these lemurs and we train them in having public sensitization to the community about environmental and educational programs and we can, we can rely on these rangers. And we decided to support the community by having a reforestation program into the community and also by sending a medical doctor once a week to the community. In this way, the community in Amparidam sees the benefit of tourism and the importance of conserving lemurs and other species of animals and the forest. And over time, we hope that they can take more care about the forest and species there and the more tourists will come. So they can see that they can have more income with conserving and protecting the forest than poaching and selling lemurs or eating them. And now in November, we have our first trans translocation of four lemurs, four and a baby lemur. I think translocation and setting up uh, satellite colonies, what we call safety colonies, of these species that are very endangered is very important. It's one of the many tools that we have available to us. And the fact that um, Miyavana is helping to experiment with this, right? Seeing how it works in, within Madagascar, translocating these animals to a, a site where there are no lemur populations currently. I think we can learn a lot from that. And I think it also adds to the value of the site for tourists being able to, to come in and, and see uh, these animals right in there, right next to their villas. But what I really like about the Havana model is it's also enabling tourists who come here to visit some of the high priority sites on the mainland. For instance, uh, the arena for the Tattersall Sea Fox, the Golden Crown Sea Fox, and uh, this new site for the in Andrea Fiamena for the, uh, for the Black Sea Fox. This is great. And that way they're, they're based here, but they are enabled to, they're enabled to very quickly go and visit these other sites and again contribute to the conservation efforts in the communities that are, that are there. Uh, so now, uh, in this first, um, first month of the relocation project, we have a student from the University of Diego here who is in charge of the monitoring and uh, when he leaves uh, the 
Nirvana environmental team are going to take over the monitoring work and uh, Tam and Tide is going to be involved in, uh, in, in support, supporting the environmental team. To me, it's, it's, uh, I see it as another success in conservation, especially coming from an organization like this. To be this involved in conservation in Madagascar is way beyond expectation. So overall, it's a win-win situation, and, and really, I believe that the combination of ecotourism properly done and long-term research presence, long-term research sites in key areas. That combination to me is the most powerful we have available to us in conservation. <laughs>